Welcome back, everybody. I am here again on the Unorthoblox server. And as you just saw, I, uh, I accidentally ran into a deep, dark biome uh, that's way underneath my base. Just sort of stumbled and fell down a hole, landed right into it. I was immediately sonically dis, uh, destroyed by the warden that was down there. Um, and was able, unable to get my stuff. I tried what, twice and was blown up both times very quickly. So I'm just going to leave it and go down there later when I'm better geared and better prepared. But before I can start work on my base, I am going to need to landscape and clear out this whole area. Get a nice clean slate so I can get started actually building something this season. Okay, so at the end of the last episode, uh, there was a zombie pigman uh, sitting around in my animal pen. And looking back over the footage, there was a lightning strike and it hit one of my pigs and turned it into the pigman. So that's kind of what I thought. Lucky uh, for me, the strike didn't hit in the middle of my villager pen because who knows how many witches and stuff I'd have to deal with. So I have leveled off this whole side of the base. So the left side is going to hold all the new villager, villager housing that I uh, tore down and replaced it with new stuff. And the lower level is going to be kind of like a park over by this, the uh, river. So I'm going to have a road that runs all the way through the village to a bridge. And that's going to connect the main base over there to the peninsula over here where my iron farm is. And then I'm going to have a few future builds over here, which uh, they all need to be connected. So I'm going to need to clean up uh, this wheat farm over here, pull down all that bamboo and sugar cane, and then move them over into the industrial zone over on the right side of my base. So if you can hear, you can hear in the background, that is my iron farm hard at work. I'm up here on the roof of the farm. It gives me a great view of my base and help so I can uh, give you guys a good view of what I'm going to be doing. I uh, want to put the food farms way, way over as far to the right as I can. And then I'll move the animals from their current pen over into the individual pastures over. So over here on the right is going to be the farming slash industrial area. So I'm going to have some uh, semi-automatic type uh, wheat farms and uh, carrots and bamboo and sugarcane and all those kinds of things. And then all my other farms, maybe a super smelter and that kind of stuff, will all go in this uh, right side over here. So let's get uh, started by setting up uh, our first farm over here. Uh, I've gone ahead, uh, marked out the area with these torches. I just want to make sure I get it the right size because uh, what I'm aiming for here is to have a very simple uh, water harvesting uh, wheat farm. So it has to be uh, eight blocks across. That way I can put a water source on each end and then keep the whole thing uh, hydrated. And then I've measured it out uh, all the way to the hillside. So I should be able to put uh, each of these terraces up and you know increase them all the way up until I get the hill. And if I keep each level uh, seven blocks deep, then when I uh, release the water at the top, hopefully it should all wash down, carry all my seeds and wheat all the way down, and I can collect them with a row of hoppers at the bottom and then run them into a sorting system or something. So like I said, this is a very simple wheat farm. This is what I would call old school, sort of what you did way back, way back when, when you're setting up wheat farms, before you would, uh, you know, just hire your villagers to collect food for you. But they do work. So they're pretty simple and you can also make them look pretty good if you want. So I will still have to manually go through and plant all the seeds. But um, until they come up with an easy way to automate the planting, um, that's all you can do. So 
So all along the top up here against the wall, I'm going to have a row of water and then a bunch of pistons that I can um, activate and deactivate to release the water. And that, that'll be the where I can uh, harvest the wheat with just a flick of a switch or a push of a button. And it'll run all the water through and close them up and then once it's dry I can just plant. So I wasn't sure what type of blocks to use in this build. Because I'm looking uh, to build more of a modern style this season. And I know plain stone blocks or bricks uh, really look too medieval for that kind of style. And I also didn't want to go too wooden or metallic. So I ended up landing on uh, the tough bricks. Because they've got the big blocky style to them. And they, they're a little more slicker. Look a little more clean, I guess, and modern. So I think they'll go with the palette I'm looking for. And I wanted to add, you know, a little bit of age and weight to the build. And I think the having those tough bricks with the block, you know, they're really, they feel bigger, even though they're the same size as the other normal stone blocks. And I think it's because of the squares and the chiseling they've got in the, ter in the uh, texture. They just feel more heavy, just to me. I could be wrong. But... Um, I decided those, I would go with those, and then I'm going to use um, everyone's favorite diorite for the walls because it's white. I didn't want to go with concrete because it's a little too, too white, but I think the diorite kind of gives it a nice dirty white look, which I'd expect with a farm. So my plan is to build a number of these similar farms. So I've got one for wheat, one for carrots, I'm going to do a potato one. Uh, maybe do a beetroot one. I'm not sure. We'll see how I feel after I get the first few built. I think now I'm just going to, uh, without any further ado, hop into a time lapse and uh, build all these farms. Then we'll go back and kind of do a tour of everything because I'm going to add in the hopper, the feeder system, and you know the collect it, and then a sorting area so it sorts all the different drops into different chests for us. So it's uh, much easier to, you know, once I harvest it, it auto collects it and I don't have to sort and put it in different chests. So hope you enjoy and I will see you in a few minutes. So I'm all finished putting in my uh, farms and then adding a storage collection area. So let's go take a look. So you see I've uh, added all the levels in here with the hydrated uh, farmland. What I'm running on is the area where my water source is. 
and it goes to these pistons up here which is holding in this water supply so once I click the button it should run down I've got an identical on this side so you can go down here where I have my uh, potatoes oops I think that went to the hopper so we've got a potato farm here and a carrot farm over on the other side and then I put this uh, storage area together oops I am missing a block uh, do not have a block okay I'm gonna have to go get a single block but I got this uh, storage system here so all the you know the drops like the potatoes and the carrots are all gonna go into these chests and then over here I've got the wheat and the seeds being collected by the uh, from the other farm we built and it's getting dark so I probably should get some sleep all right now that it's daytime we can uh, get back here so like I said potatoes are going over here let's just plant those so I don't have to carry them around we have our wheat farm over on this side which is growing pretty well and then we have our storage area straight up here so if we go up we can take a look so this is where the potatoes and the carrots are going to be farmed with the water just rushing down there and rinse it off and i've got the same thing over there so that switch will activate the wheat farm over there and harvest everything and then back here behind the scenes like in the wizard of oz i have this giant mess of hoppers All these uh, composters are sitting on top of hoppers here because it um, reduces lag. So if you put the composter over it, all these hoppers are not going to lag the server up. But then I've got the redstone going through here, which will go up to up there. So it goes up here, so it will fire off the pistons and then... So let's get around here and then this is a collection area so if we take a quick look in here oh no no water water but yeah i've got the water right there so the items go through the hopper or kicked out into there and there's some soul sand which pushes it up in uh, one of those little bubble elevators and then you go through the bubble elevator all the way up here where it hits the top and gets pushed out into another water stream which runs onto these hoppers over here and then into each of these sorting chambers so each one of these little sorting systems is set up for each of the different items that we can collect so this will sort everything out put them into the chest down there and make it much easier for me to uh, to collect them so I don't have to collect and sort by hand and then at the very end I've got a garbage collection area where it collects all the garbage stuff that I have and I did the same thing. It goes way down here. So that's the wheat farm. And big line of hoppers. I'm very lucky that I have an iron farm. So it gives me enough uh, iron to actually do this. Of course, there's nothing else inside those buildings. They're kind of a fake facade to make it look very impressive. But there's really nothing there. So I may fill them in later. But so far, all these empty stories are empty. So if I get time, I may... You know, fill it all up and make apartments, but I think that is uh, that is it for now. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you're uh, having a great day. I'm hoping I'll get more of these videos out. I'm working on it. So I'm going to clean up all this and then uh, start on to my next project. So until next time, have a nice day and I'll see you later. Bye bye.